Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Camera Tuesday. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about why no to Nikon. So let's dive right into it. Well, first you have to understand why the heck I'm making this no to every damn company. Well, there is no one answer to every question. You have to figure out your tools. Basically, you have to, you know, fight, uh, know which battle to fight. So for that reason, I'm making this, uh, like, you know, bringing down closer to ground uh, kind of videos where you're like, okay, no company is perfect. You have to fine tune it. Like, oh, my foot is like, you know, size 6. There is no point buying a, like, you know, shoe that is size 10. So. In that way, let's uh, go along. So the Nikon, well, it's the great system. It, like flat out, it's a very great camera system. It like it's 100 years old, like more than that. It started in July 1970. Now, again, in the early years, they used to make optics for military, but uh, you get the idea. Like they're, they're old. They basically they have been around the block for long enough. Now. In the, the lens mount that you are familiar with Nikon, their uh, basically DSLR mount, the F mount was created in 1959. So yes, it's a very old mount and here's the deal. You can literally buy 1960s, 1959 uh, you know, lenses and put it in D850 and they will work flat out they will work so that's the you know magic of backwards compatibility and they they hesitated a bit to get into uh, you know digital system and they uh, they introduced a digital camera in 1999 however it was APS-C not full frame but uh, in 2007 they introduced a full frame uh, basically DSLR so that was their first foray in, uh, and in 2008 they released a very good camera now here's the problem with that uh, again in other slides it will make uh, you know more sense it was a bit behind schedule and uh, they introduced digital, they introduced their lens mount, they have been around for 100 years and they did uh, basically uh, display is basically Leica. Now Leica right now when I say Leica you think of oh luxury brand oh it's like something you know only few people buy it's not something that you will see sides of a uh, you know on the side of a Olympic or a cricket match or football match or FIFA you will not see cameras like that uh, like you know Leica in anywhere or this kind of places but it was like that. So, uh, Leica was like that. It was that huge. They were selling like uh, at one point in time they were like uh, you put uh, basically Nikon and Canon together. They are like bro, hold my beer. This was that. They were that big and huge. But uh, Nikon displaced them. So Nikon did uh, the unthinkable. Basically, they displaced Nikon. Uh, basically, Leica. And they have lot of uh, you know great achievements in their belt. Basically, they've been to space. And when I mean space, I don't mean like these cameras. Okay, these are right now available in International Space Station. You can see the video down below. Is that uh, their film cameras also went into the Apollo programs? And uh, back in the days, they had to like you know special lubricate it. Uh, basically, make a camera that has like uh, good lubrication properties and all that jazz. So they've been there and they have been verified by nasa so that again adds credibility now many reason for that why nasa is like you know favoring nikon instead of canon is again i could not find an absolute truth but the reality the best i can guess is basically canon use a fluoride lens now fluoride lens are better optically but they are far more fragile basically they are much more likely to shatter and turn to dust so uh, and because rocket launches are like again violent by inherent design uh, basically nasa is like no no we cannot have something that is like you know that fragile so uh, nikon is like uh, cleared for uh, iss right now as of now like only uh, nikon cameras are available in iss and in terms of sports they displaced like in the same way like you know uh, how sony is displacing these companies right now like they did the unthinkable and they have serious support from sports community and Nat Geo uh, like uh, many Nat Geo, National Geography photograph like this Afghan girls and many photos that I will if I show you those photos you're like oh I know this photo I have seen this photo most of them are taken from Nikon so Nikon has a like great legacy and great achievement it's not like they went high they went really 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 high up so they have some serious accomplishment under their belt you cannot dismiss them so what happened to this giant that displaced uh, basically Leica? What happened to them? Well, they got displaced by Canon. Same way they displaced the Leica, Canon displaced them. So how the heck happened? Now here's the deal. This happened very slowly. This was like what we call slow takeover. It was not like boom. It was not like you know how Sony displaced uh, basically full frame sales in uh, 2018 and 2019. It was not like you know bam, no Nikon and Canon sell and like only Sony are selling. It's not like that. It was very slow. Over time it happened because you have to understand. Uh, and, those that I like in 1960s and 1970s, uh, Canon was like a tiny company, tiny, relatively tiny. And Nikon at that point, they had reached their peak. So uh, Canon killed them very slowly over time. So what did Canon do? Well, Canon took a very big gamble. They threw away their old compatibility. They're like, let's let's scratch this whole thing up. Let's build a new mount. Their EOS series, and basically their EF mount. Now, why that was so revolutionary? Again, uh, they simply said, 
do this uh, let's say throw this all away and they went into a lens design where there was no mechanical connection between uh, basically lens and camera now Nikon still does that now what what does that mean basically that means there was a lens motor uh, instead of being in the lens it was in your camera so basically all you had a shaft and the shaft had to be rotated by the camera in order to focus now again it worked for that time but it was inherently slow because you had only one motor and each uh, camera would have different uh, basically each lens will have different power. a telephoto lens would need a different kind of motor versus an ultra big but in case of Nikon they were stuck with one motor they can design the lens however they want but they were limited like they can't have a shaft like you know 10 meters uh, you know like literally lenses are like measured in meters now telephoto ones they can't have something that is that far you know in terms of uh, basically their aperture this you can see in their model lens also their aperture is still mechanically coupled to the camera like you have to have a lever and that lever has to be physically moved by the camera so and that is why when sony uh, uh, introduce their uh, basically uh, mirrorless system a lot of people are uh, putting canon lens into sony system because it was electrically uh, coupled so uh, software in software you can fix the autofocus issue but in case of nikon there was a physical motor you have to put in the adapter where you can move the lever in order to uh, you know activate the aperture so canon through all that away like in as early as 90 uh, 62 basically something like that they're like okay let's throw all this away and make it 100 percent electrical lens and that blew blew up basically that that exploded basically over time uh, their lenses even though nikon had better autofocus system they uh, canon was much more faster and their lenses were far more fine-tuned and just slowly just based them like before this uh, before this mount like there was nikon 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 some canon and uh, after this it was like canon 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 and some nikon so that mount happened now i told you like uh, basically nikon was a bit slow to the game in terms of full frame mirrorless uh, mirrorless i'm saying full frame dslr uh, they did came out and they released a camera that had full uh, quote unquote hd basically 720p video and like you know full frame that was a big deal yes deal just few months later 5d mark ii was released now why that's important that's a full hd and full frame flat out for that is the core reason why everybody thinks canon is the uh, one that uh, you know introduced video to uh, you know uh, DSLR again practically Nikon did but again Nikon was crippled 720p and full HD was needed at that time so this is this changed the whole uh, you know uh, basically market share so over time they lost the market grip now why does that important well, till this point and basically uh, as early as 2008 and 90 most of Nikon's income is coming from their photo division now in this time they finally realized their ship is doomed so they started to create multiple portfolios basically they went into industrial optics basically making encoders for robots a lot of profit there uh, made into me medical equipment, lot of profit there and the camera became a small division in Nikon itself and that solely happened because you can see like this is Beijing 2008 and all these like all of them are in, like uh, basically Canon lenses like all of them like right now you go to fifa there is a very good chance you will see like uh, 10 12 uh, canon and one or two nikons flat out heck you will see there's a very serious chance you will see more sony than nikons so that is a very big loss to nikon basically over time they lost their grip and they never recovered because they never re-engineered their amount and not to mention uh, they were very slow there was like uh, canon was always one step ahead so over time the market share loss was very serious you may not think it's a big deal but because right now if you go to an upcoming olympics nikon still has a booth nikon will still stock up by a lot of lenses and there are enough photographers that use it but again compared to share wise it's it's tiny it's minuscule and uh, all this uh, for some reason for a company that is 100 years old they made one bad decision after one bad decision after another bad decision basically flat out they could not get a break because uh, as early as like you know 2005 and all that most of their income profit wise not in terms of like oh we put 1 billion here we got like 2 billion out there like oh we put 100 million we got 700 million like in terms of profitability the most of the profits were coming from cool peaks like now now cool peaks was very profitable but it was short lived like flat out it did not even reach 20 30 years properly so you were like it hey, doesn't kind of uh, nikon make school picks right now yeah absolutely they do it's just no, not profitable it's like yeah we are selling you but we are selling you and it's in a very loss or a very tiny profit so flat out cool picks were like a short-term uh, saving grace that's the reason why nikon was not completely killed from the market like the cam uh, basically the camera division because nikon realizing the se severity of market crash that happened after 2010 for camera division every single camera company started to die after 2010 the market sales like like before 2010 digital camera digital camera digital camera after 2010 everything died so in during that time 
uh, Nikon tried to you know reinvigorate survive again so they created multiple bad decisions basically they created Nikon one inch mirror mirrorless system this was in the hype of micro four third and they created one inch system to this day nobody can understand why the heck Nikon created this because again this was like if Canon has a cripple hammer this has like a cripple uh, storm breaker basically why the heck they crippled it so much like they could have used APS-C sensor they had it they had APS-C lens lineup they could have easily used APS-C they were mass producing it already they did not they could have gone to micro four third again there are already lens manufacturers out there they could have used micro four third no they went even lower and they went to one inch why because at that time Sony released uh, RX100 and that reinvigorated the market because Sony RX100 was not only like successful it literally made sony profit it was like whoa how the heck a point and shoot is making profit because again it was like a quote unquote dslr level power in the palm of your hand so nikon wanted to you know utilize that success they failed my brother had this camera like actual nikon uh, series cam and it was so damn bad like it has 4k video at 15 frame per second i'm not even joking I'm not even joking, like literally. And uh, right now, I, uh, as of making this video, I checked the Nikon site. These cameras are not even available anymore. In Matlas, they used to be there, but now it's a, like replaced by Z series. In Archive, you have to find these cameras. So this is a whole product line that Nikon developed. They made the cameras, they made the lens, uh, they made the whole new mount system. All of that failed. So a lot of money dumped. Then. Uh, because Sony RX100 was so successful and Panasonic also made a, a quote-unquote cheaper version of basically RX100 Z100 and that was also successful because those both were one inch sensor so Nikon was like okay let's make a point and shoot that is one inch that is like you know suitable for light photography and some serious work they created the DL lineup they took money for this basically people were paying money for this as a pre-order and all that and they cancelled it this whole product line was built actually built, developed tested and then they realized it was nowhere good enough as Panasonic or Sony so they killed it flat out second product line up down now during this time i specified like people already started to predict because mobiles are becoming so good that uh, this will go down but this time uh, gopro came into the market and action camera becomes a big deal so they are like hey let's cash into that they created key, uh, key mission lineup the if you haven't seen this i would not be surprised because a very few of them were sold and see they killed it very quickly so you can have three product lineups were created one inch interchangeable mirrorless system flopped uh, one inch point and shoot flopped uh, action camera division flopped three lineups it's not like okay these three models did not sell well these are product lineups that like the amount of money they lost is enormous in this regard and the why the heck it's happening keep happening like one time i can understand two times okay three times why the hell is this case happening simply because they are very very slow for some reason they take like a uh, when this uh, gopro hype was starting around 2005 to 2008 uh, they did not jump in then they, once the market already is the maximum saturation then they started the development of uh, basically key mission again development takes time bigger com the company the more slower your development would be so by the time they actually released the product it was already outdated so they are very slow to react and they are very slow in terms of update. The sole reason I have a Canon camera versus a Nikon camera is nothing to do with image performance because flat out in APS-C, Nikon has a bit better performance. Why? Because Nikon is using 1.5x crop rather than 1.6. So Nikon has like, you know, better ISO performance and flat out if I show double blind testing, uh, most times people will prefer Nikon images. Nikon has a bit more pleasing color and all that jazz. Then why the heck I chose Canon? One simple reason. The moment they showed me the back of the camera and I, I saw the live view preview. So that I'm like, I'm not touching Nikon. It's like, why the heck Nikon does not show me the live feedback what is happening in live view? I mean like, live view is in the name. It should not, I should not require like, okay, what will happen if I go to 200 ISO? Show me, show me in the live view. They did not, I'm like flat out. I, so that is the reason why I bought Canon. So you have to understand, they did not wait one bad decision. Decision after decision after decision, they suffered seriously like this. Did not hurt their uh, like you know economy. They destroyed it. So what will happen in the future? Well, first you have to understand Nikon will survive. The name, the brand, the stock, they will survive. But Nikon's camera division, the public camera division that you and I use, that is in very serious danger right now. Flat out as in Q three of uh, basically interview for uh, company support and all that jazz. Uh, the Nikon Corporation division was like the imaging division has to justify its own existence because they were not making money and not only that they were sinking money it's not like okay we put 100 million there uh, you know they were like uh, 101 million again because you can put 100 million in a bank and make more money than that but okay if they were making a little bit profit okay understand but flat out they're losing money and all these three products fail uh, like you know 
product fail like up again that hurt it and they're they're in running red the nikon camera division not the nikon uh, uh, optical encoder division that's printing money nikon's uh, medical equipment that's printing money nikon's semiconductor industry that's printing money but nikon's imaging division that's in red like right now if you go to nikon statement they're like oh this is thing what we do and in the small corner there will be like condition applied we also do camera so all hopes were directly focused on Z-mount. Z-mount had to be like, you know, a smashing hit in order to survive. But they crippled this also. And this is the one time where like Nikon intentionally crippled it. It was not like they could not do something better. They crippled it intentionally. Like for instance, at this point in time, Nikon's uh, D800 series is very successful, very popular. Again, when I mean successful, I mean, okay, at least that model is selling well. People are happy with it. People are buying it. But again, not enough to like, you know, justify their whole uh, debacle with their one inch lineup. Again, it was selling. So they crippled this camera out of the gate, flat out. Nikon is a, such a old company that they know how to make battery grips into a vertical grip. The battery grip just has battery. Vertical grip have control schemes in there, from shutter release to aperture control to ISO, basically knobs and dials, basically control system. So we call them vertical grips. These puppy does not come with vertical grips. Nikon is the only company that I have found so far that uh, in their full frame lineup, DSLR lineup, have a ability to connect three batteries. Two batteries in the vertical grip and one battery in the uh, chamber because same way uh, basically Fuji does that. That's awesome. Fuji does that in mirrorless. That's awesome. They could have done this with this, but they did not because they had to cripple it. Why they had to cripple it? Because at that time they were thinking D850, let, let it be out. Like, you know, once we are done with DSLR lineup, then we'll make this, uh, you know, into a pro system. That was a bad move. Flat out. In this uh, basically Q3 and 4 development, there was like very simple reality. They are not selling enough. They are selling, but they are not selling enough. Not enough to justify Nikon's itself. So there's because they crippled it. They crippled the battery system. They crippled the memory system. They could have easily had two XQDs. They did not. Again, they, they were crippling themselves. So it was like a, a company that was like, hey, my 3G model is selling too much. Uh, let's cripple the 4G model. So once we are run out of the stock of 3G model, then we'll turbocharge this. Again, people lose faith at that point. So many people who were like, you know, holding to like, I'm not gonna switch system. I'm not gonna switch system. And once they saw like what these cameras are, they're like, yeah, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, bro. I'm like, I'm out, like flat out, I'm out. They could have done like, you know, uh, basically, side engine and all that jazz, they did not do that. They could have dual card slot, which is necessary, which is necessary, D800 has that. They know that it's a necessary feature. They removed it. I'm like, it's not even like, they do not know how to do, do uh, dual XQD. They have dual XQD in D5. There is an option, you can buy CFAST or dual XQD. So again, they know how to do it. They just did not do it. They're like, let's cripple this, let's cripple this. And I'm like, you're crippling yourself, nothing else. Because many people are flat out selling. Uh, once they saw how crippled these cameras, they're like, yeah, I'm jumping to Sony. I'm done. And uh, people used to say, oh, Sony G Master lenses are expensive. Uh, Sony's G Master lens in India, uh, 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 is 1,50,000. Pay attention to that number, 1,50,000. This for me, 1,90,000. Sony G Master is now cheap and not to mention because Sony knew that they had to you know fight against two giants like Canon and Nikon they realized a very clever system they made their lens mount quote unquote open benefit Tamron and Sigma can natively develop the glass again they will not have like complete uh, clear uh, what you call autonomy but they can develop it natively Nikon never did that uh, and Canon never did that because they were making most of the profits from lens sale not camera sale so I can understand why they did not do that but again if their lenses are this expensive people will be like yeah What's the point and then they release z50 and i'm like i'm done i'm done like flat out this was a bad decision z50 was a bad decision it the sensor does not have ibis why does that matter too much well because z mount lenses do not have optical image stabilization not even one z mount has like oh optical image stabilization. But meaning you use this you will get poor uh, like you know basically ugly images even dslr knows this like there is a reason why optical image stabilization is standard after 2000 like it's something that you must have in order to utilize your equipment to your maximum potential they remove that so now, right now the only way to have image stabilization is by uh, basically dslr lenses and who came up the design with this like the mirror folds down like seriously seriously you like isn't this the same company that made d3 uh, d5200 d5300 d5400 it's like they know how, just just fold it on the side so they have to end their DSLR lineup. Again, the sales of this are not promising and that creates a feedback loop because again, not enough people bought it. So they're like, uh, should we invest into this or not? They have to kill their DSLR lineup because DSLR is last generation, 3G. 
4G will replace it over time. Not again, it won't happen like in one day. It will happen over time. But again, it's gone. DSLR days are number. So any DSLR they have, they have to sell it in a discount. Again, they will still make profit because uh, it's better to sell more than, you know, make sure everybody, Tom, Dick and Harry switches to Sony. So in the future, Nikon will survive. Their camera division, not so certain because these, if they were not tripled from the day one, even with poor order focal performance, people would have given them a second chance, chance because again, firmware can fix your uh, auto focus, but firmware can't magically give you data redundancy or vertical grip and or flip out screen in this. So again, I am not very certain with Nikon's uh, future. So this was my presentation on Nikon, why I say no to Nikon. I hope you liked it, learn from it. In that case, please click the like button. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I'd urge you to press this like, press it twice to show me your extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching. Oh, and share it amongst your friends if you liked it.